Hey, everybody. On today's Locked On Bama, we're going to welcome in the one and only John Garcia from SI.com and also from the Locked On family. He's going to talk a lot about Alabama football recruiting with us and recruiting as a whole as we'll talk some uh, NIL and what that's going to do to the recruiting landscape. So stick with us right here on Locked On Bama. Well, Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody. Welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me. John Garcia of SI.com, that's him. John, how you doing today, buddy? I'm doing well, Luke. How about you, man? Doing, doing great. Um, appreciate you joining us today. Uh, let's, I, I want to talk about this first before we get into recruiting stuff. And that's NIL and tampering and um, transfer portal stuff and how that's affecting recruiting because really, look, it's been out there and I think nobody's really got a good grasp of all this yet. We're going to have Philip Stutz with um, – high tide traditions on later this week, we hope to talk about Alabama and, and how all of this is working. But I think this is all coming up because of Jordan Addison at Pittsburgh, who is is the Bolitnikoff winner from last year. And now apparently it looks like he's going to transfer to USC. Uh, there were some rumors it could be Alabama, but uh, it looks like he's going to transfer to USC. And um, he's going to have all these deals and all this stuff. How, number one, how is that not tampering? And number two, how do you stop it if it is tampering? And number three, is tampering such a big deal? Well, I think one of those questions is a lot easier to answer than the other two, uh, and you can figure out why. Uh, but but I do think it's a big deal. Um, but But how in the world do you police it? How in the world do you even prove that tampering is, is is going down with some of these players and and those around them because there's no rule set up to just dis, distract anybody from contacting a former coach a mentor seven on seven coach family friend someone in the family there are no ncaa rules against communication between any of those parties and any business so to try to figure out one how it's happening and two how to stop it i i really don't see uh, any plan uh, that, that can lead to any kind of success in that regard. Um, and look, we understand why it's it's become such a borderline polarizing issue, right? I mean, he's a Blitnikoff Award winner at a school that is supposed to contend this year. I mean, in, in the ACC Coastal, it's really Pitt and Miami kind of have the most buzz. Maybe it's by default, but either way, you get a chance to go to your conference title game. You got a chance to have a nice season. And obviously, yeah, you know, Pitt has had other transfers, and ironically, you know, Keaton Slovis from USC is supposed to be their starter. So the Panthers had a nice vibe going into the 2022 season. And look, their offense is still high powered. They still have other receivers, but when it's the Bolitnikoff Award winner, it just looks and feels different. Um, I did get off the phone with with some Power Five sources today that thought Bama and Texas were still in the game here. We did confirm Addison was officially in the portal and really nothing else to this point. So um, it's a really interesting dynamic and you can understand why people are so on the opposite end of the spectrum from one another. Either you're all for it or you're all against it. But like most things, Luke, I think there has to be some kind of happy medium in terms of a resolution. How much power do we give to the players um, and how much can people take advantage of those players? I mean, that's something that is always gone down in recruiting and business. And this kind of blends each each side of that coin. So it's kind of messy, as one coach told me today, but there's really no way to solve it in, in one sweeping move. The, the problem I have with it as a college football fan is how do you wrap your arms around a, a team anymore when passion to me is the one thing that sets college football apart from everything else? I mean, college football fans are notorious for remembering uh, seemingly innocuous plays from a, a game that only determined who would go to the Citrus Bowl uh, in, in 1988. Um, and, you know, we, we the, the term too full of Bama uh, comes from a play way back when, I think Alabama was playing Rice, a player comes off the sideline and tackles a player running for a touchdown because he was like, I just couldn't let him score on my teammates. And not that saying that that's correct, not saying we need people, more people coming off the sidelines, 
but saying it looks now like instead of being in love with your school, it's in love with the almighty dollar, which again, as I say, as that comes out of my mouth, I think, yeah, that's sort of how the world works. But I guess having the, the, the fantasy rug pulled out from under us and learning that, um, oh, these kids really probably don't love their school all that much. They Everything's about the brand and about what they can do for them. And frankly, that's what everybody does about everything. So why should it hurt your feelings? It's it's really this catch-22 that's that I'm scared is going to hurt the overall product. Right. You know, and I think it's a reality check. I think that's exactly... Uh, what this feels like it, it, it does it does feel like a tipping point in some regards like hey this jordan addison thing is going to become a thing but we also said that about quinn ewers and many prospects before that but i think the difference is not only that that he's so well thought of at his own school and, and so nationally known for positivity winning the Belitnikov award last year but you just didn't expect that caliber of player to become available after spring football and the theoretical catalyst is money, as you mentioned, Luke, but I, I do think that it, it's more of a reality check. We assume, well, the portal is going to be for guys who either feel disgruntled or lose out on, on a on a top, you know, tier competition like the quarterback battle, right? Spencer Rattler gets benched for Kayla Williams. Spencer Rattler hits the portal. Nobody bats an eye because it was sort of expected. But when it is on the other side and it's somebody who not only starts but has been thriving and looks like an NFL guy, then it's kind of like, whoa, what, what's going on here? But all those guys at the same time are focused inward and focused on what they can do now. Uh, it's no longer, hey, you got to put in this time to create an investment for later when someone can hire you after the NFL Combine. It is invest in yourself and you can begin profiting right now because you do have value right now. And if a kid thinks he can have more value somewhere else, dollars excluded, he now has the opportunity to make that move uh, in rather quick and, and in this case, very shocking fashion. So it's it's a slippery slope, but I do think it's a reality check. And this this Jordan Addison situation, however it plays out, is going to be one we call back to in, in discussing the portal and NIL altogether. All that being said, I'm on the Jordan to get Jordan Addison to Tuscaloosa train. So uh, by any means necessary, I suppose. Um, John, let me go ahead and tell everybody about Built Bar. Summer is coming. You want to get in shape. John doesn't have to worry about that. He's always in shape. But with summer, you're going to you're going to need some food on the go. And Built Bars are the perfect snack to take with you on family vacations or just a, a personal vacation. Throw them into your bags and your kids' backpacks. Make sure that everyone has a bar so you're fueled for your summer adventures. All Built Bars and Puffs are covered with 100% real chocolate. That means with Built Bar, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it. Most Built Bars contain about 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar, which is actually has around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. And you see why Built Bar is the place to go. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCK15. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCK15. As I put the Built Bars up there and I try to get my face in. Built Bar, that's where you want to go. Go check out these Built Bars at Built.com. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off that order. That's promo code LOCK15 at Built.com. All right, John, let's talk a little uh, actual recruiting here. And I know I bring up this dude every single time we talk, and I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, quarterbacks are the deal. You know that. I know that. Everybody who follows football knows that. Um, Eli Holstein has been, been getting crystal balled to Alabama here uh, as of today, which is we're doing this on Monday afternoon. And it seems like he's going to commit – uh, sooner rather than later, at least that's the general overall feeling. And that, you know, this whole thing about, um, you know, Alabama's in it for Arch Manning, Eli Holstein, who, which one do they prefer, which one prefers Alabama, et cetera, et cetera, who's going to commit first. I truly believe Eli Holstein is, has been, uh, had the green light to commit whenever he wants to. Uh, just Despite Arch Manning being one of the best, most well-known quarterbacks we've known in recruiting circles for some time. And, um, Eli Holstein went out to California and apparently tore it up. You know all about it. And uh, what kind of pickup would this be for Alabama if that were to happen? Yeah, you know, these two, ironically, Luke, both in Louisiana, the top two players and quarterbacks in that state, and they both look like they're going to leave the home state for college football. Look, I mean, Eli Holstein on his own is a great quarterback prospect. Look, we haven't come out with our rankings yet. He will be a top 10, borderline top five guy. And when it comes to athleticism, Eli is going to be maybe the most coveted dual threat 
in this class of 2023. And you mentioned what he did on Sunday at the Elite 11 Vegas. Let, let me look off screen to read off some numbers here. 40-yard dash, laser time, 464. Vertical jump, 38.3 inches. Agility, 419. That is like slot wide receivers type stuff in terms of timing. Powerball ball, 45. Point five at 6'4", 222 pounds. So some perspective there. Bigger than Tim Tebow at the same stage, much more athletic at the same stage based on these results to the point where you say, well, how athletic is he? Well, the Elite 11 tests every quarterback that comes through that circuit and every quarterback you can think of that has had success at the high level has gone through the Elite 11 circuit and tests. Eli Holstein's test on Sunday was the highest overall score athletically that they've ever given out higher than Lamar Jackson and Andrew Luck and Pat Mahomes, the aforementioned Tebow, any quarterback you want to throw out there, Eli tested better overall. Doesn't mean he had the fastest 40 or, or ind individual things, but collectively he tested better. Uh, and, and then he went out and threw it and got an invitation to the elite 11 finals as a pure passer where athleticism is really limited to the pocket and breaking the pocket to a degree that there's really not a whole lot of sprinting at these, these camps and combines. So, you get the best of both worlds with Holstein, 44 touchdowns as a junior, huge breakout season, state champion at Zachary High School in Louisiana. And now the whole world wants him to be their future quarterback, including Alabama. And as you mentioned, Luke, it does appear that, that the Crimson Tide is, is in the driver's seat with this thing. Three visits this spring, a fourth visit now, he told some reporters yesterday, is in the works. So you you get curious. Once that visit is set, is this the day – that Holstein tries to make that verbal commitment. And, and then it brings you to the other point. Where does Nick Saban stand in this whole deal? Does he have that green light? Can he just pop at any given moment? And then what does that do for the quarterback board? Does it rest things and settle things and say, hey, this is the guy for Alabama? Or does it only bring up more questions? I think those answers are still to be determined. And I think they can change. And maybe they have already changed, Luke, to, to your point in saying that Holstein's probably the guy for Bama in the 2023 cycle. If that's the case, I do believe something has changed and maybe something like Sunday and those validated testing numbers can put one school over the edge in terms of changing their own internal uh, quarterback board. So it's fascinating either way. Alabama is probably going to end up with either Eli Holstein or Arch Manning in this class of 2023. And if you're a Crimson Tide fan, you got to feel really good about that and the trajectory of the quarterback room behind uh, Bryce Young once he moves on uh, to the NFL. You know, you've got Jalen Milrow, Ty Simpson, and then whoever jumps in from this class. So I think some great position battles are set up for the future. And as you know, Luke, to win a national title, you have to have depth in the quarterback room because competition breeds attrition, uh, and so does the SEC schedule. So you need quality depth and talent in that room. And either way, Alabama's in really good shape. Let's go ahead and tell everybody about Bet Online. Love Bet Online. Just uh, the, the place to go, betonline.net, if you want to get that bet in, is where you want to go for sure. Uh, bet Online is the number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the league baseball season. Bet Online is your continued source for all, spending, all sports wagering information and live betting. And Bet Online. That's where the game starts, John. You already know that. And look, look at that. I just put it up there. I mean, I'm just I'm getting good at this, John. I'm telling you. Also want to tell everybody about Rock Auto. RockAuto.com. You've heard the jingle. You know all about it. Uh, that's where you want to go is RockAuto.com. This is a family-owned uh, business that has been in business for quite some time with ever-increasing numbers of makes and models. It's not impossible. Uh, for your local chain auto park store to stock all the things you need. Why endure the often pointless and seemingly intimidating questioning like is your Honda Odyssey an LX or an EX? Nobody knows the answer to that. You don't even know when you bought it. You're like, I just sign an X. You don't know. Save the time and money using Rock Auto. You can save up to 30, 50, 100 percent at rockauto.com. Rockauto.com. Be sure to use uh, say that you heard about them from the Locked On family, we would appreciate that. That's rockauto.com. Go there and save a ton of money. John, are you a car guy? A little bit, yeah. I mean, I'm more of a truck guy now, but yeah, I, I, I fancy Do you get truck parts too. at Rock Auto? I Go don't, but I might. <laughs> okay, see, Rock Auto already got you a customer right here. Mr. John Garcia is going to buy that timing belt. 
later this afternoon, whatever the hell that is. I'm not. Yeah, I know. I know what that is. Yeah, of course. Obviously, I don't. I assume it's a belt that doubles as a watch. I have no idea. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Um, all right. I'm. I want to ask you uh, two parts. I want to finish up with Eli Holstein really quickly by asking, you know, when when it comes to Eli Holstein and Arch Manning. I think the 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 reason most people prefer Arch Manning, and not saying Arch Manning is good, they're both awesome, but maybe the reason most people would prefer him is because of that name, and because they would assume he would be the kind of guy that could attract other blue chip talent. What kind of Pied Piper will Eli Holstein be should he commit to Alabama? Well, I think the Holstein projection is on the rise from a national standpoint. I think Sunday was a huge day for his brand. I mean, if you want to calculate some kind of NIL value, I think it went up no matter how you calculate it. Uh, on Sunday, uh, the Elite 11 is an event uh, where, you know, it's been kind of a rite of passage, right? I mean, how many great uh, college and NFL quarterbacks went through and succeeded at a high level at the Elite 11? Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, Tua Tungvaluwa, Bryce Young. I mean, the list really goes on and on recently or, you know, over the last 20 years, in general. And this is really the one event that's interesting relative to Arch Manning because we don't believe right now, Luke, that he will participate in any type of organized camp other than the Manning Passing Academy. So what that means is that Arch Manning will not win the Elite 11 competition this summer in Los Angeles. Eli Holstein just shattered the testing records and threw well enough to get that invitation. So he will now have a chance to uh, follow in, I guess, Tua's footsteps and have a chance at winning the Elite 11 competition. So I do think from a national perspective, his trajectory is on the rise. Uh, kids know about him. He was committed to Texas A&M. They've built a great 2023 class to date, uh, obviously had the number one class in 2022. Holstein was recruiting on behalf of A&M. So from that Louisiana to Texas corridor, prospects know him. And obviously there's a ton of talent in those states. Uh, and then once, if and when he commits to Alabama, Obviously, he's going to continue to take more visits to Tuscaloosa. Heck, he's, he's frequented the school as, as much as most commitments have to date. Uh, so once that happens, he will help uh, to become uh, an extension of that coaching staff and help with recruiting there. I, I just think his star is more on the rise compared to Manning, who we've known about for so long as a four-year starter with obviously that last name attached to him. And I think with, with Holstein, it brings you a different perspective, right? He is a modern dual-threat quarterback as to where Manning is still that pocket passer. He's the guy uh, who can move, but really is doing his best work in the pocket as to where Holstein maybe gives you more play calling flexibility because you can now design runs for him at the quarterback position, something that is unique with Eli relative to all the other top quarterbacks in the country, whether you're talking Jaden Rashada, Dante Moore, Chris Vizina, all those guys can move to a degree, but if you're dialing up a short yardage play or a goal line play where you want the quarterback to tuck and run it, Holstein is the first guy that comes up in that conversation. And I do think that resonates with other recruits because it, you know, it brings a toughness. It brings a physical element to quarterbacking that oftentimes isn't associated with the position. John, really quick, just to wrap up, uh, Malik Bryant, a uh, fabulous defensive player, has released his top five Alabamas in it. You feel like they're the leader? I do. Uh, he took that first visit to Tuscaloosa and was, was really blown away from all angles. Before that point, we heard a lot of, Florida smoke, Oklahoma smoke, even before that point. Uh, but look, he's a hybrid pass rusher who can play off ball linebacker. Alabama has worked wonders with players in that similar uh, skill set. Uh, and, and the visit really blew him away. And I think it's just a matter of what happens between now and his commitment date of July 23rd. And who gets him on campus most frequently? Uh, can Florida pull some of that Alabama momentum away uh, to potentially keep him within state lines? But I think Alabama sold him on the off-field aspect most consistently. We all know on-field Alabama's pretty much hard to beat, right? I mean, there's really not a whole lot you can sell uh, against the Crimson Tide. But when you start to think of the off-the-field stuff, you know, when Nick Saban pivots there, it's for a reason. One, your priority. And two, there's really something to build from a networking perspective there uh, in Tuscaloosa. And that's really what caught Bryant's attention. Uh, and, and Saban's also on the horn with the kid consistently. And, and again, that alone is, is really hard to beat, uh, especially relative to the other school that we think is the favorite, Florida, uh, who is, of course, led by a uh, Nick Saban disciple and product in Billy Napier. So I do think the ball is in Alabama's court here. 
Uh, Florida's the in-state school. They're going to try to get him on campus again, so we'll see. But if he had to commit today, I do think the Crimson Tide is the pick. John, you're the best. Awesome stuff again. Uh, we will talk next week for the Eli Holstein segment, <laughs> which we will just we'll just get that sponsored by some, some one of the Holstein family friends or something. But uh, John, good. appreciate it, bro, and we'll have you on again soon. Sounds good, boss. Take care. Thank you.